Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. Glad to have you with us on this Monday, June the 8th of 2020. Can you believe we're already in the 12th week of this virtual work environment? We're glad to have you with us. We've got another half hour or so of your HCC news and information. Brittany Pacheco joining us in what feels like week, what, 110 right now, Brittany? Yeah, that sounds about right, Todd. Good morning. And before I begin my little spiel, I want to say a happy very special happy anniversary to my parents. They're oh, celebrating. Oh, happy anniversary to them. They're celebrating 51 years of being oh, married. Wow. So, wow. congratulations to mom and dad. Um, just want to take a little personal shout out. Uh, but we appreciate everyone being here with us this morning on Facebook Live. Be sure to like our Facebook page as well as Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget to head over to our YouTube channel where you can subscribe and hit that notification bell and find out the latest from HCC. That's right. We are, we've got a great show lined up for you. Uh, Brittany, you know, one of the most common questions we were getting at the beginning of this pandemic when we had to shut down were from our international students. They wanted to know what's going on. How would this affect their status? We've got Nithi Savanthanan, and he's the director of our international student services. Good morning, Nithi. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Todd. Thanks for the very kind welcome. Absolutely. We're going to be back with you in just a moment. And if you are an international student, make sure you write your comments below this post and we can get your questions answered live and on the air. So keep an eye out for that. But first, we want to start with Richard Gosling. And Richard and I have met, you know, Richard, we've met several times virtually since this whole thing started because uh, we've you and I have talked and you've uh, been on some TV stations locally in Houston and uh, you had a big role with helping our faculty get prepared to be online. Your day job though is you're an economics professor here at HCC, correct? That's right. And you uh, tell me a bit about how this all started because we, we've talked before but our audience here may have not seen those interviews but you established something called an, um, a virtual faculty lounge Tell me why you established this and how it worked. Right, so initially the lounge was just created for a very humble purpose, which was just for faculty to get together and share ideas. Perhaps if they had questions or they wanted to troubleshoot a particular problem, they could hop on board the lounge and maybe engage in a chat or a discussion. And then it kind of evolved into something more than that, which was to actually provide real time training and, and then eventually, uh, in the beginning, we only had a few dozen professors. And then with the passage of time, it really ballooned into something way beyond what we could have imagined. I think north of 950 faculty members are subscribed to that lounge now. It's amazing how these things we, we've been doing since the pandemic started and, and we started working remotely. You know, our shows here at HCC TV, we went online with them and they've taken on a life of their own as well. And this faculty lounge became essential for the faculty because you had, you had to get everybody prepared really within a matter of weeks to deliver instruction online. How long does a course usually take if people are getting trained in Canvas? Yeah, each of the sessions is, well, the, the, the basic trans, uh, uh, basic uh, Canvas course, of course, is uh, a little bit longer. There's the four-hour one, and then the full uh, version is like a couple weeks. But uh, in the faculty uh, lounge area, we didn't want to do that. We wanted to have something that would be supplemental training for people who already had the basic training and had questions that went beyond those courses, like... Uh, exam security, for example, or video creation. Tell me about some of the numbers you were able, able to glean over this um, to show that it's been working because you've had the number of visits and uh, live room sessions, they've really skyrocketed. They really had. Uh, uh, Ruben Duran co collected a lot of our data here and some of these numbers may be well north of what I'm going to reveal to you, but we had over 9,100 Kaltura live room sessions 41,000 plus uh, students, that includes faculty who are also serving as students, and over 10,000 hours of instruction that were actually recorded, which is just 
phenomenal and exceeded my wildest expectations of what this was actually going to be like. Tell me a bit about your thoughts as we head into the fall. You know, we've made it through the semester. Online learning for the summer is now taking place with all classes being delivered on time. But things are going to look a little bit different in the fall. Tell me how, uh, what's been the, the, the faculty uh, thinking on, on this? What's been, there been a reaction that you've gotten so far? Right. Well, actually, I think it's a positive one. I mean, there's, a, there's uh, obviously a little bit of of uh, anxiety as there is with any kind of change, right? But I think for the most part, faculty are pretty upbeat and I think they're ready for the challenge. Uh, the administration has done a really good job at providing uh, some for what the fall is going to look like, so it's not going to be a surprise. And in fact, the HCC's uh, executive team's already created a, a two minute promo that introduces faculty and the general public about the changes that are already underway, including flex campus and uh, distance education uh, on a schedule. So we're actually going to be introducing some training this week, which will focus on those two formats. And the training that you're having, do you expect that'll be as intense as it was um, when you first uh, started this back around spring break with the faculty lounges? Well, probably not as intense, only because it's not in emergency mode anymore. And now we've kind of cleaned up the lounge a little bit. In the beginning, it was a little chaotic because we were just creating things on the fly. But I think at this point, it's a little bit more well settled down. Uh, the number of training hours is not nearly as intense. At one time, we had 71 hours of training at the high point of the crisis. And I don't think we need that kind of training any longer. I mean, we had meetings as early as 7 o'clock in the morning all the way until 10 p.m. And now it's uh, reflecting sort of a normal work week, a normal work day from 9 p.m. to roughly around, you know, 5.30 although there's a couple of evening sessions, but uh, I think it's tapered down, but it's still serious uh, and important work that we're doing. It's just not crisis mode anymore, thank goodness, right? Sure, um, in the, when you're instruct when you're an instructor and you're trying to teach your course online and you, you've been teaching it in person for most of your life, um, do you, what do you have to change as far as your methods? Do you have to take on a new way of looking at things? What what changes inside you, and what do you what what goes on to uh, to to happen to give online instruction or to be able to deliver that? That's an excellent question. In fact, we cover that in one of the sessions called uh, "Teaching Like a Pro," uh, using Kaltura to create excitement and engagement. And one of the things that professors have to sort of break loose from in this new environment. And it's a very hard thing to do, which is you're no longer just the sage on the stage anymore. And you can't just lecture any longer because that dog just won't hunt in this environment. So it's not that lecture is dead. It's just that it's no longer king. It's still the heart and soul of what we do, but it is not the only thing that we do. And so there's other items that can be used to make the classroom time that we spend together more valuable. In fact, it's going to become more precious now. Like if you're meeting on a Monday, Wednesday schedule, where you're only meeting nine students on Monday and nine students on Wednesday, and it's a different nine. You don't want to waste it just with an 80 minute lecture, especially since many of those lectures can already be recorded online. So different tactics and more engaging type of activities. And those are the kinds of things that we've been doing experiments, simulations, quick exercises, that kind of thing. You know, one of the biggest challenges I know for HCC and really all community colleges is when when this pandemic was happening and during the spring break, things started shutting down. Um, people were texting me and saying, hey, why don't you guys just uh, place all your classes online? Please With community me. colleges, it's not that as easy as saying that because we have a lot of courses where yeah, students need enough. that instruction in person in those labs. That's right. And uh, we had a number of faculty, though, still were able to rise to the occasion and did some remarkable things. And I've shared those with you before, Todd, um, off camera and in other uh, instances, but uh, particularly in areas like industrial electricity, hotel and restaurant management, where professors came up with some absolutely ingenious ways of uh, helping students. But make no mistake about it, I think in the lab-based courses, we, the college recognizes that we need to have some sense of normalcy. And those faculty members need to get back to their equipment and they're going to. I know you're 
you you definitely miss your own equipment, right? That you wish you could have. I sure do. Yeah, yeah we're so, getting used to the way we're doing things now, like everyone. But yeah, we miss that uh, studio and having um, the luxuries of what you you had there in person. Right, and the, and those are the th- kinds of things I think on the workforce side that uh, really aren't going to be able to continue in that in that way any longer. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a different environment because you're going to have fewer students. But we are going, there is kind of going to be some return to some semblance of normalcy. And so I'm actually upbeat about it and encouraged. Uh, I'm very uh, optimistic about the outlook. And I think, well, maybe it won't be 100% the way it used to be. And maybe that's a good thing. Because I think in some sense, this may have given a jolt, not just to HCC, but the colleges all across the country that they need to increase their game, bring on their game face. And I think... Already, I see HCC enrollment in my summer classes for summer two. I've got in excess of 85 students in four classes. That's wow. phenomenal. Yeah. For summer two? Yeah. Wow. So I think a lot of those students who otherwise were going to go to four-year schools this fall are now realizing that they have this best-kept secret in their backyard called Houston Community College. <laughs> So. Absolutely. You know, and, and it seems like we've gone through this. There's got to be some takeaways that are on the positive side. And maybe we're just learning a different way of doing something more efficiently in the long run. Absolutely. And I think those modalities that we're talking about that the executive team outlined, which are still going to be continued to be fleshed out, like Flex Campus and, of course, uh, distance education at a scheduled time are really very thoughtful ways of thinking about, you know, the different ways in which students use their time, number one, and number two, their level of comfort, because clearly some uh, some staff and some, I'm sorry, some students will feel comfortable coming back to the classroom. Others may want to pause and wait a little while and may have a look and see sort of attitude, and they can still participate because they can do so through live streaming in the uh, flex campus model so that is an encouraging you know element of the transition plan back to the fall and i know a lot of folks richard are going to be uh, very pleased to hear that you have a good number of students signed up for your summer two session we hope that continues in the fall and we look forward to getting back in those buildings in some shape or form richard goslin thanks for being here this morning thank you so much take care todd best wishes thank you now we're going to join Nithi right now, Nithi Savanthanan, and Nithi is the director of our International Student Services. And Nithi, it looks like your camera has some reason going sideways. Um, let's see if we can tilt it a little bit and uh, see if we can get it. There we go. Perfect. Uh, how are you doing this morning, right? Nithi? Yeah, how are you doing this morning? Can we do it the other way? Can you try it one more time sideways and we'll see if it straightens out? Let's see. Okay, well, we'll go. We'll go with where where we are right now, Nithy. How are you doing this morning? Can you hear me, Nithy? Very good talk. Thank. Good. I can oh. hear you very well. Good to hear you. Well, you know, one of the biggest things we have, Nithy, uh, when we. Um, started this pandemic was working with our international students and there were a lot of questions from them. Um, The biggest question is how does the pandemic and when we went into this type of mode, how would it affect the students on the F1 visa status? Can you bring us up to date on that? Oh, the pandemic created so many uncertainties, guidance from our management and from the Department of Homeland Security, we able to make a very smooth transition. One of the things before the pandemic, we learned that every student, every F1 student must maintain 12 credit hours, nine face-to-face and three online. The moment we were affected by the pandemic, the guidance was provided every student can maintain full time by taking all online class. That was a biggest, sure. biggest change of the practice for almost 100 years that you have to maintain nine face-to-face, three online, now all online. And that was a, obviously a big concern for students because they were they were they seemed um, uh, very concerned about losing that status. And you don't want to do that when you're forced into this, you're forced really into an online instruction right away. Okay, that's very that's a very thoughtful moment. The one big thing we did was first, we sent an email to all F1 students to ensure that we are 
here because many thought that's the biggest transition. Am I right? Many thought we are close. How do we reach out? So one of the biggest campaign we did was, hey, we are open virtually. Sure. Please reach out to us. We will respond to you. And then we created a couple of things. We did a virtual town hall to engage our student. We, we uh, virtual campus visit to engage our student. We try in every mode to bring our students connected to us so that they know we are here to guide them with any questions they have. We are open, we are open live to answer any question. That was the biggest disconnect when students fell because there was a traditional thinking, oh yeah, I will go to the office and ask questions. And now we are open virtually. Many didn't know how to make the connection. For students looking to register in the fall, what's changed for them? What do they need to know if they're incoming or planning to go to HCC in the fall and they're an international student? Well, Todd, you know, as of right now, the mode what I'm learning is we will have three modes from our instructional side. One will be face-to-face, -face, hybrid, and online. So we are not sure exactly the final uh, arrangements for the fall semester. And we are also waiting from the guidance from SEVP, that's the Department of Homeland Security, to guide them. Meanwhile, if you're already enrolling your classes, go ahead. Your options, whatever options available right now, go ahead and register for their classes. And then once we get further guidance from SEVP, we will guide you to ensure you will meet the status requirement. I guess the main thing to, to get across to our international students, just like student services, financial aid, and really all departments of our, our of HCC, you guys are open right now. You're, you're virtually functioning online, and you're still available to help those students on the one-by-one-on-one -on -one basis just through a virtual world. Correct. Correct. Our phone line is open. You can call our phone number anytime, 8 to 5. We have our agents are there to answer your calls, address your concerns, and direct you to connect with the student, international student advisors. We want to make sure that one, our admission is open. You can apply 24 seven, you know? So even we are working virtually, our online process is open 24 seven. You can apply for fall or spring. Our phone line is open from, nine, from eight to five. So students can reach out, families can reach out, and also our email, we have all the connections and all our staff are working to meet the student need and answer any questions related to enrolling at HEC. Nithi, I know in the past you guys have always used student ambassador as a great way of reaching your students. How are you working with them right now? Great, Todd. That's been a great benefit to us. The student ambassadors has been a one of the powerful peer-to-peer -peer conversation they bring what is happening on the ground and guide us through the process. So the, the year is coming to an end, fall and spring, and now we are selecting the new sets of ambassadors for fall and spring again. So the application will be out in another few more weeks. We want a lot of students to apply because you, you as an international student, you as an ambassador can help your peers to shine and have the beautiful HEC experience. And we certainly welcome everyone on board. As Nithi mentioned, uh, you can log into International Student Services. They are here and ready to help you. Um, we're gonna put all the email addresses and the websites in the link to, uh, listed in the social media post. So you can look on those. Nithi, on a personal level, have you had a chance to get out there and do any running during this uh, pandemic, any social <laughs> distance running? Absolutely, I try to do that. I, I'm trying to build two things. I run as well as a bike with my kids. I go around oh, the neighborhoods. Great. There's a lot of bike trails in the Houston area. Beautiful bike trails. Remember, despite we are locked down, doesn't mean the nature doesn't allow us to explore them. Breathe, enjoy, experience Houston. It's a beautiful city and we are blessed despite all the unknowns. There are great people who can guide us through these unknowns. Absolutely. Nithi Savanthanan, the director of our International Student Services. Thank you for joining us today, Nithi. Good to see you again. We'll see you out there on the running trails. All right. Nithi has uh, joined us. Looks like we may have lost uh, his signal there. Brittany, are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, Todd. I'm here. I can hear you. All right. 
Well, good morning once again, Brittany. Um, I wanted to go over a couple of things, and we kind of mentioned them both with Richard and a bit with Nith Nithy as well, but the safe learning options for fall. Um, there are four different options, and real quickly, let's just go through those. Maybe you can tell us about option number one. Option number one, Todd, is just like what we're doing right now for summer 2020 classes, which is online anytime. It's just as it sounds, classes online at any time. And there's option two, which is online with a schedule. And from what I'm understanding, online with a schedule, Brittany, is just like attending your class in person, but you in attend online at a certain time. So you get the, the uh, instructor either live or it's posted at a certain time. But you can log on a specific time, just not in person. That is correct, Todd. And option three is what we call our flex campus. So this is for signing up for an in-person class. You have the choice to come to campus or participate online at the set class time. Now, the number of students in this classroom will change as social distancing requirements are adjusted. So signing up early is the key. That's right, because the uh, the classes will be smaller than you're usually used to. So you'll definitely want to sign up early, as Brittany mentioned. We'll talk more about enrollment in just a, in just a uh, few moments. But option number four in the fall are lab-based courses. And these are critical hands-on. Skills-based learning will still be offered. But the sizes of the classes, Brittany, now this is key. The sizes of the classes are going to be much smaller when the students. But, you know, that's going to work in students' favor because you get a little bit more of that one one on one time with the instructor. And one of the biggest things about HCC that people always talk about is the fact that our classes are smaller and you get a chance to know your instructor and learn in an environment with a lot less students. I know you as a student probably uh, face this a lot. I certainly did. I really enjoyed the small classrooms uh, at HCC as opposed to sitting in a classroom with maybe 300 students like you would normally see at a university level. Uh, but this was great because, as you just said, I got to know my professor one on one, uh, was able to reach out for any help that I needed at the time, and they were always able to help out. Yeah, you know, one thing I do remember when I when I went to uh, U of H for a time being, that's where I eventually graduated from. But um, a lot of those classes there and you went to UH Clear Lake, I, I, I believe, correct? That is correct. Go. God. Yeah, but I a lot of those classes, especially, you know, you get the ones like geology. I, I made the mistake of taking geology ones and the, the communications classes. You know, you go in, you're in an auditorium with literally five to six hundred people. Your instructor gives part of the, the lesson plan. Then they have on these teaching assistants and they're always rotating and changing. And if you have a question, you have to make an appointment, meet with a teaching assistant, usually sometime way after the class or on a different day. HCC breaks it down to really, uh, at least in this environment, they're getting a chance to meet with their instructor one-on-one -on -one online, and then also attend classes in a, a smaller way as well. And that's really invaluable. It really is, Todd. And I, I can't express how appreciative I was with having that small classroom setting as opposed to what you're talking about at university level. Uh, when I was at U of H Clear Lake, uh, because I went as a junior, I didn't have to take those freshman courses where it, you know, it was 500, you know, students in one setting. So I didn't have to experience the TA situation like you did. Um, but there, it was also a really great environment of being able to talk one-on-one -on -one with my professor. Uh, but talking and support, Todd, uh, from professors, regardless of the classes that our students are going to take this upcoming fall, all students have access to the same kind of support of tutoring, student yep. life basic needs supports, career and pathway advising, that's a big one, career employment and counseling services, and so much more. So this is just a general idea of what to expect, but plans are constantly being adjusted uh, based on students' needs and safety. And as we mentioned before, registration is open, so you can lock in your classes today. Um, and as things are going to change, HCC will be sure to communicate those changes to all of our students through their HCC email, our website, and of course, social media. And right here on Up to the Minute.
And speaking of registration, you can go to one website to uh, register for all of your classes for the later summer session and uh, for the fall session. The website is hccs.edu slash now. Did you hear Richard Gosselin saying earlier that his summer sessions for many of his classes were, were getting full? That's very encouraging. And he said he was kind of shocked because uh, summer, he usually has a very lighter load. You know, I think during this time, Todd, because of COVID, um, situations have obviously changed, but one thing I, I do want to, you know, commend our students for is continuing their education despite all the craziness that's been going on worldwide and then also whatever is going on in their own personal life. I've said it before and I'll say it again, students, do not let all of this stand in the way of getting an education and taking that step closer to getting your degree certification, whatever it is that you're coming to HCC for. We're so proud of you and are here to help you in any and every way possible. Absolutely. Brittany, I want to move on to a couple of other topics. One of them uh, for COVID testing. There's still a lot of people around the city. There's a very great need for COVID testing and HCC has a COVID testing site that's free and it's continuing on our Northeast campus at the Northeast College uh, Mondays through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. and that's uh, 555 Community College Drive. Yes, but it's also important to note, Todd, that in order to be tested at this location, you do need to make an appointment. So you can go online at txcovidtest.org or call the phone number 512-883-2400 to make your appointment. You probably will not be seen unless you have that appointment. So be sure to go online or make that phone call to set your appointment today. We have a huge initiative here at Houston Community College because we're trying to get Houstonians back to work, especially if you've been furloughed, maybe your job has been lost because of COVID-19 and laid off. Well, we can re you retrained and retooled through our jobsnowhouston.org initiative. Uh, we've launched this program. Brittany, there are five areas which you can learn to train in in short-term certification programs. Absolutely, so those five uh, fields that we're talking about is healthcare, logistics, manufacturing, IT, and construction. So if you have any interest in any of these areas, uh, be sure to head over to jobsnowhouston.org for more information and see how HCC can get you trained to put you in that job. Jobsnowhouston.org. If you need the services, if you wanted to uh, look for a new job, you don't have to be unemployed to get a new job or retrain in a new field. You can visit this website. We can point you in the right direction and get you trained for a new career. And if you know someone who's been laid off, refer them to this website so they can get started. Uh, Brittany, tomorrow's show, we're going to be talking about creative writing. Is that one of your favorite subjects? You know, I was actually pretty good at, at creative writing, um, but it's something I haven't delved into since I was in college, uh, but it's, it's definitely of interest. Well, we've got a creative writing club in Katy at uh, our Katy campus, and they just launched a new magazine called HTX Lit. We'll be talking with a member of our faculty involved with that, along with one of our student contributors. And we have a very special guest tomorrow. Dr. Jimmy Adams will be joining us on the show. We're all a big fan of Dr. Adams. He has written an incredible piece about uh, the times we're living in right now, and there's no more better uh, special day for him to recite that piece and to share his feelings than tomorrow. And we're going to have him on the show tomorrow, and we're very proud to do so. So join us tomorrow for Up to the Minute. Brittany, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Todd, for having me. And thank you, everyone, once again, for joining us on Up to the Minute. Be sure to share this podcast so we can grow our audience and share this vital information to the masses. Once again, like our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. And don't forget to head over to YouTube and subscribe. That way you can see the latest videos, all produced from our very own HCC TV. That's right. We will see you tomorrow, 10 a.m. live on Up to the Minute.